Okay, today we're going to talk about this very powerful passage, but in a way that you may have not ever understood before. Bear with me. We are most certainly saved by grace. Something that God has done for us that we could never do for ourselves. And that's a beautiful thing. Not something that you can work towards on your own effort. The work of man. The work of man is impossible to get into heaven, right? The work of man. It does not save us, but the grace, grace of God over here is what saves us. Grace of God. Okay? So we are all agreeing. We're all agreeing that it's grace of God that saves us. Grace of God. Not the works of man. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 9 tells us that it's by grace, not of works, not of yourself. Now, let me explain to you what I think, how this works. Because verse 10, the very next verse, tells us, now a lot of people don't like to read that verse because it sounds, it, it sounds opposite of what the other two verses are saying. But it says, well let's just read the first two. For by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's not something that you could do on your own. It's a gift from God. It's a gift, right? So that you can't boast about it, right? At least any man should boast. Now, verse 10, a verse that we leave off, a verse that belongs to this. It says, we are, we are his workmanship. We're created. When, when we become saved by grace, we become created. We're a new creature. We're a new creature. Now, the purpose of being a new creature is explained in verse 10. The reason why we're saved by grace is for this purpose here. Okay, and what does it say? It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ unto good works, or for the purpose that God has adorned before, he's adorned the plan before that we should walk, walk as a new creature. Now this is not obviously the works of a man. Now keep this in mind. When we walk in Christ, this walking are things that comes from grace. Grace teaches us, look at that, teaches us to walk, right? Grace teaches us to walk. Grace teaches us how to do this, verse 10. Now let's think of it this way. It's still all from God, it's still free. That means the blood sacrifice, saved by grace, believing in the blood, believing in the faith, believing in the name. That's part of being saved by grace, but that's not all. You have to understand we're created to walk as new creatures. We're created to live like Jesus. I'm not perfect yet, but I'm just saying. Now, how can we do this? Because obviously the works of man is not going to work. You can't go around boasting, look, look, look at me, look at me. Uh, you can't do that. That's what this is saying. Not of yourself. So, how can we walk... How can we walk as a new creature, verse 10? How can we do it without the works of man? How can we do it without these works? Without the works of man. We cannot do it with the works of man. How do we do it? Here's the answer. From the teachings of Jesus. Titus, Titus tells us in 2, verse 11 to 12, that he teaches us. He teaches us because we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. Now I'm going to give you two examples of being saved by grace. And it's it's like this, it really is. One one example is is having a uh, let's say let's just say a uh, dinner. And the other example is a house. Now let's just say that both of these is something that you need and something that you want and something that's practical and something necessary for your life to do this new creature and walking Christ but God's got to give that to you God's got to give you a house God's got to give you the food and you can't do it on your own it's it doesn't work you're saved by grace through faith unto good works but you got to learn how because you can't do it on your own but let's equate these works that God created for me the house and the dinner come from him. 
This is grace coming down from heaven. And there's some teaching involved, however. This is the part that de the devil doesn't want you to learn about grace. This is, the, this is what we're talking about here, is the doctrine, okay? Doctrine of grace. This is the doctrine or teachings of grace. Now, this is all very important to understanding Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, plus 10. We're learning the doctrine of how grace saves us. We're learning that it's a free gift. You can't do it on your own. We're also learning that we were created for this purpose of living a certain way, but that way has to come through the teachings of Jesus. You can't teach yourself how to do it, free from God. The lesson is free from God. Now, I'm trying to give you some examples of how that all works with this house that's given to you freely and this dinner that's given to you freely. Check this out. Let's start with the dinner. Free gift from God. He cooks the chicken. He roasts the chicken. All the vegetables are cut up for you. Put it in a bowl. You have a big table laid out with all the silverware and plates and glasses. You have beautiful drinking juices some wines if you believe and it's all given freely to you at a banquet right and then a car is sent to your house and drives you to this banquet you're invited you come in and you sit down and there's a fork laid out the smell of the food the, the waiters are putting the food in front of you and it's all placed right there in front of you the grace from heaven now the teachings is basically that you have to pick up the fork <laughs> and eat. There, that's your responsibility in faith. Faith to do. Now, some people will tell you that that's working their way to heaven or working their way to that dinner. Can you believe that? Think about what God has given. Think about all the effort and work and labor that God has done freely to give you to that point where you're eating this beautiful banquet meal, even took you to the car, even brought you in the house, set you at the chair, gave you a chair, gave you a plate, put the forks there, the soup, the salad, the meal, it's all right there with your glass, it's all right there for you. And the only thing he's saying is, I want you to walk like Christ, you're a new creature now, don't eat like the Gentiles. Follow my little instruction here because grace is teaching you how to walk like a new creature. That's verse 10. It's part of this. The doctrine of grace it has to include all this or you're not going to get the doctrine, the real teachings. They're only teaching you half, not the full measure of the doctrine. You want to know the whole thing, don't you? Well, all grace has come and given you a free dinner and Jesus' instructions or commands, people hate that word, the work that you have to do is you have to pick up your fork and eat. Now, somebody will tell you that, no, you don't have to pick up your fork to eat. <laughs> because that's working for your dinner. Really? Is that working for your dinner? Totally misunderstanding the point of what grace does on the cross, the teachings of the blood, the freeness of everything, including, including the instruction to pick up your fork and eat. I mean, you're sitting there and the food's right there. Now what, Lord? Even the instruction to, well, go ahead and start eating. Pick up your fork and eat. That comes from God. Even the instruction. When we get the instructions to walk like Christ, guess what? That's not from you. It comes from the teachings of God. Grace manifested and teaches us. That's what Titus says. Grace teaches us. Titus says, grace teaches us. Look it up. You can't teach yourself how to enjoy or get this dinner. You're not working your way. <laughs> <laughs> to to making this dinner, creating this dinner, cooking this dinner, providing this dinner. That's all been done at the cross. But God says, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? Get the fork and eat. There's things that we still do because grace told us to do it. Now, the second analogy, a house. It's the same principle. You need a place to live, so God's going to give you a free house. Think about this for a second. It's beautiful. It's got all the rooms, the kitchen, uh, the garage. It's got the landscaping, house trees, pond, rivers, streams that you want perfect. The kinds of landscaping that you like. Interior, the size of the, 
it's got everything perfect. So the, the colors and the design are absolutely astonishing. You couldn't have done it better yourself. Why? Because it's grace giving you this mansion. Okay? If you were to design your own house, picture it. Think of it ten times better from God, right? So God makes this house, and then all of a sudden he brings you to the house. He brings you to the house. You see the house. He gives you the key to the house. He gives you the key to the house. And you say, and his faith says, and here's where faith comes in and your part to walk and obey the teachings, not yourself, but what he says to do, like pick up the fork. What does he say over here? He gives you the key and he commands, use the key to enter the house. Use the key to enter the house. And you're thinking, well, that's work. Here's what the hypergrace people think. After everything's been done for the house, the construction, the maintenance, the design, the landscaping, and everything's been put in with the utilities, the electric, everything that goes involved with picking the lot and the beautiful environment on the outside, the river street, everybody that, all that comes from God for free. But hyper grace tells you that you don't even have to, if you use the key to get in it that he gave you, by the way, he gave you the key, he told you to use the key, teachings from him, that's not something that you did. You're, you're standing there at the house, wow, well now what, Lord? He goes, well, here's the key, free. Here's the instructions. Now use that key to get into the house and live in it from God. Now all you got to do, here's that, here's that bad word people hate. They hate this word is obey. Use the key to get in, he says, from grace. Pick up the fork and eat. Pick up the fork and eat. Right? Faith to do. Faith to do. Obey. Faith. Same thing. Obey the faith. Obey what's been told to you. Now Jesus has given us some simple commands. He's done all the work on the cross. He's done all the work on the cross. Right? Jesus died on the cross. He shed his blood. And he's going to forgive us of our sins. Jesus. And he's saying, I've provided a way for you to be forgiven. I've given you my blood sacrifice. I've even given you the teachings on how to become a new creature. He's shown us how to live. He's told us how to enter the house. He's told us, go ahead, pick up your fork and start eating the food. I've provided everything for you. I just want you to walk in faith. Walk in faith. That's what this is right here. This is walking. Walking in faith. Walking in faith. Okay, that's all he's telling you to do and even that comes from the grace of God the teachings and the explanation that nothing over here the fork to pick up the food was not your idea the fork to pick up the food was not your idea the key to enter the house was not your idea okay just like repenting from your sins is not your idea forgive each other is not your idea Love each other is not your idea, okay? Stop sinning is not your idea, okay? These are commands that God is basically telling us to live like a new creature, and those come from the teachings, the teachings to live holy. Make sure you understand this passage right here. Titus chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, 11 to 12. There's nothing you can do to get that house on your own. There's nothing you can do to get that dinner. Nothing, ever. Or you would be able to boast. You're saved by grace through faith. But don't doubt for one second that you don't have a part in this that God has told you and expected you and freely given to you. Even the instruction to, to change your ways is from God. You're saved by grace through and through, up and down, sideways and inside out. Just make sure you understand what living by faith is. 
Because people want the grace, the blood, without obeying. They want this house, but they don't want to use the key to get in it. That's too much work. They want the dinner, but how dare you tell me I got to chew my own food? That's work. That's too much work. I don't have to chew my own food. I want the food, though. Unbelievable. We need the correct doctrine of grace. The correct doctrine is the full measure of scriptures together, unified together, completely taught properly. This is the way to rightly divide the doctrine of grace and the understanding and how it applies to us and my responsibility. Grace brings a responsibility to you that you didn't have before you heard the word. These people over here, man's work, they don't have any understanding on how to be saved. They don't have any understanding on how to be saved. So we do, we've learned from Christ. And learning from Christ, these guys are trying to get in with religious practices. We're just doing what he told us to do and that's not a religious practice. That's not vain works, that's not dead works of man. Anything Jesus tells us to do is holy and acceptable and pure in his sight. And it means you believe and he sees your faith. I love you guys. I hope this makes sense. Peace.